Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And in today's video, I'm going to show you all about how to build a Power BI report against common data services, but doing that in real time using direct query. So stay tuned. The ability to build reports with Power BI against your common data services data has existed for a long time. But one of the new features they've just turned on is the ability, at least in preview mode, to build reports in real time. So looking at data without having to do a re-import your data. So there are two ways of getting data out of common data services. The existing way, which is using data import. The data import way gives you the ability to look at data a little bit backwards. So you're looking at data an hour ago or two hours ago or maybe a day ago, potentially. Doing it this way with data import is extremely fast from an end user perspective because the data, all the data they're seeing is cached in Power BI. It gives you full capabilities of Power BI also. The con is it's not real time, which takes us to our alternative way of seeing data in Power BI, and that's with a direct query. By doing a direct query, it's gonna, by any time I click on buttons inside of there or view report, it's gonna run numerous queries against your common data services environment. And it's gonna do that in a real time way. Meaning that as my data changes, the report will automatically change without having to do a data refresh. So pretty awesome. The size of the reports are also being much, much smaller because there's no data stored inside that report. Only the metadata for the actual report is store, stored inside that report. That's one of the cool things about it. The con is performance. So the con is when I'm looking at, when I'm clicking around, it's gonna run queries against my common data services entities, which could indeed give us a performance problem, whether it be CDS or SQL Server or Oracle or whatever, it's gonna run much slower because it is running you know, tons of queries against your CDS entity and not be cached in that case. So that's the con of it. Uh, the con also is you get less of the features of Power BI by doing it this way also. So things like building some pre-aggregations and some of the transform logic can't be done with direct queries. So let's see how to do that now. Let me open up my environment here and let's open up my environment and go to my mock-up environment. There's two things we need to do. I did this in a previous video, but let me show you one more time. I'm gonna go to my admin center here and I need to get the name of my environment, first of all, and you'll find that in the admin center after you select the environment, so I'll select my mock-up environment, and we'll see the environment name right up top here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and right-click and copy that link address, and when we use that link address, we're gonna strip out the HTTP, and we're gonna strip out the forward slash at the end also. Once I do that, I'm gonna go to settings, and I need to turn this feature on, right? Now it's a preview feature, so I'll go to product and go to features, now it's a preview feature right now. That may not be the case uh, you know, a year from now when you're watching this video, but to turn it on right now, at least in this year, 2020, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on this TDS endpoint feature right here. By doing that, it's gonna treat my common data services database much like a SQL Server database. So that means I'll be able to open it up inside of Management Studio. I can also open it up inside of Power BI. And it also gives me access to direct query because it's treating it just like a SQL Server. So let's go over to Power BI and actually use that connection. So this report you're seeing here is the same data I'm gonna be using earlier. This was using the old way of doing it. So what I did is I hit get data, I went to more, and I went over to, uh, once it comes open, I went to common data services, and I went ahead and did an import of the data. Once I hit connect, it prompted me for my credentials, and the import of the data in. That's the one way of doing it that makes a very rapid user experience and you get full access to Power BI. What I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new environment. I'm gonna to go to get data and to make sure I can do direct query, I'm gonna select SQL Server this time. Okay, brand new report, I'll paste in my URL. Make sure you don't use this URL of course because it will not work for you. All right, let's strip out the HTTPS. And the port you want to add at the end is 5558, and I'll do a direct query. Now, this 5558 is going to treat it like a SQL Server. I'll hit OK. 
and there's a comma between those, mind you. Now, here's the last step, important step. Now, if you've already done this once, it's not gonna prompt you to do this again. But in my case, brand new instance, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Microsoft uh, account. I'll go ahead and authenticate in. It's gonna ask me for my two-form authentication, so I'll select my username. There it goes. And I'm all, I've am i already typed my password once today, so it's going to go ahead and authenticate me in. It'll prompt you, of course, for a password if you have not authenticated in. Then I'll hit Connect, and make sure you, see, on the last screen, make sure you pick Microsoft account to do that. And all the two-form authentication and those kind of things will also work. Now, for SQL Server here, it's going to give you a listing of all the tables, just like it's a SQL Server database inside of Management Studio. So in my case, my tables begin with prag underscore, and I'll check, uh, check two of these random tables up top here, and I'll hit transform data just to show a few pieces around this. Now, if I had a whole bunch of tables checked, it would also build relationships for me also. Uh, not the case in my case here, but let's do a few pieces here. I'm gonna go ahead uh, for my status report. I'm gonna go ahead and delete a few of these extra plumbing columns that CDS gives me that are going to, just gonna confuse my customers that are trying to use this report. And of course, like things like this status title name, you might wanna go ahead and rename these columns like uh, availability, for example, of employee. Or, sorry, uh, status report. Let me call it status report uh, type. I don't know. What do we call it? So you can, of course, rename each of these columns. It seems more human versus my prag underscores. The reason I'm seeing prag underscore, by the way, in each of these tables is because that's my publisher name for common data services. It's called Pragmatic Works, and my prefix for that was prag underscore. I'm also going to go ahead through and delete a few of these columns that I don't really care about just to kind of simplify my environment. There we go. And I'll just go ahead and change this guy right here so I can find it easier. Let, and I'll put this, call this availability. Something like that. All right, good enough. And of course, you'd also want to rename the tables also and get rid of that prag underscore here as well. Just just uh, like it, like just like my environment, your environment's gonna look a little messy right now by default also. So I'll just call this just employee status. And I'll go call my next one like check-ins. Here we go. Okay, I'm not gonna get very fancy with this though. I'm gonna hit close and apply and call it a day. Again, this is not a Power BI webinar necessarily. It's more about how do you connect with direct query instead of importing the data. So let me show you a few of the extra gotchas that, you're, that I hit when I tried this as well in my environment. So once I do this, it's going to create the direct query. Now watch this on the left here before it goes away. I had three, now I have two. So I had the model, I had the modeling, the modeling tab like you're seeing right here, the relationships. I also had a, an area for power, the old power pivot where I can build aggregates and all that. That's gone away. That last one I just mentioned, the, the power pivot part has gone away here. And then lastly, my report area you're seeing right here. In the relationship tab, if I had any kind of relationships between these entities, that would show here as well. So if I had at checked one more entity, we likely would have seen arrows going all over the place in this case. I've also found that at least at the time of this recording, the, the TDS version, version of doing this with SQL Server gives us a lot better relationships than the common data services way of doing it. So it actually has the genuine relationships inside of this where in common data services uh, connector, I have to delete the relationships sometimes and recreate them oftentimes. So now if I go over to my SQL server, my report here, let's go ahead and get rid of that filters tab. Let's give us a little more real estate so you can see. And let's create two quick reports. One is going to be based on um, the check-in. I'll just do title here in this case. Uh, okay, here we go, it's dash report. And let's find out uh, once it comes up, up in here. Well, that's not a good valid column. Let's find one actually is. That's what I'm looking for right here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and just make that account. And I'm just gonna count the number of status reports I've received from my employees. I'll do that as a card. And I'll do that as a card, there we go. And one thing you can do also, uh, and I picked the wrong column here. I should have picked the status report ID. But we'll go with it. We'll go with this for the time being. It's fine. Uh, all right. So if I check this and I go ahead and double click on that, we can go ahead and call that like count of status reports, something like that. And you get this nice, nice better name that you're seeing right here. Okay. So with that now done, let's create one more report. We'll use this against the employee status table. We just want to get the availability status, and we want to count that by the employees. And then let's go ahead and make that a quick uh, bar chart like this. There we go, and I'll make this a little bigger. And let's do, versus do this, do a count as well. Uh, I don't want that as a legend, I want this to be a value. There we go.
All right, so we have two quick reports. Took us a few seconds to build. We can, of course, make this prettier, of course, but let's go ahead and save this now and see how we can actually use this. And I'll just call this uh, uh, CDS webinar example. I'll save that off if I misspelled it. And then I'll go ahead and publish that also by going to File Publish. And I'm going to send this over to the Power BI service so we can use that in a moment against my private workspace right here. And then we'll make some data changes and see what it actually looks like. So right now it's sending the metadata up to PowerBI.com. It's going to open up the report next and give me an error that I'm going to need to fix. And that's our final piece that all this is building up to is how do I fix the service to where it's real time also. All right, so now it's done. Let's go ahead and open that report up. Now, I might not get the error here because I might have already had the connection already out there, and I think that is the case in my case. But let's show you how, uh, how I would have fixed this. If you see an error up top here saying the invalid credentials, you can go to your, uh, your um, report here. I'm looking for my um, report. I was called CDS example. So I'm looking for CDS webinar example. I hit the little dot, dot, dot. Oh. There we go, that's the report. Oh, I need to go to my data set down below, excuse me, CDS webinar example. So make sure, first of all, you go to your data set right down, oh, right down here, the very, very bottom, you'll see data set, and you pick whatever your, your uh, report name was, and then you go over to your settings at that point. Now, one of the settings that's gonna be here is called data source settings. Now, in my case, it's all fixed because I already have another report, I did this before, ahead of time using the same, the same uh, providers, but, if that was not the case, I go to edit credentials. I would choose OAuth, that would, which would be here right now, the basic. I choose OAuth. I would choose organizational for the privacy level. And I would check in user right here and I'd hit sign in. By doing it that way, everybody's gonna use their own credentials to sign in to that data source. So I'm only allowed to see then what I'm allowed to see. So if, I'm, if my, my credentials are not allowed to see that data source, it will pass my authentication in and then reject me ultimately from doing that. So this is how you can make sure everybody sees that. So let's go back to that report again. And let's take a look at what this actually looks like from a data refresh perspective. So if I were to go ahead and add a few records in here, I have my application all open here. I'm gonna do a ready for, check, check, ready for work check. I'll say I have a fever now. And I've been exposed to COVID. I'll hit confirm. Okay, as I seek medical help. Now on my report, let's take a mental note here. Okay, I've got it right here. Uh, my seek medical help only has one employee that needs that. And when I refresh this by hitting the refresh button in the URL here, or when I come back to support again, we'll see seek medical help just jumped. And now I have 16 count, uh, SAS reports, not 15 SAS reports. So this now jumped. And every time I make a change, all I have to do is open up the report again, and it's all refreshed, all ready to go. Before, what I have to do is I have to go to my data source and manage their refreshes and change their refresh to happen at most eight times a day with the pro license uh, at the time it's recording at least. So you can make it, you can have more than that of course if you're using a, uh, the premium license. So this is how we can ultimately, uh, we connected to common data services. We use that port number 5558 port number. We then went ahead and did a direct query report and we notice as soon as I made that change, as I make my changes like right here, I have a law, I have a, um, just a cough now, oh, no fever, no fever, hit confirm. As I make those changes, all I have to do is open up that report again and just hit the refresh button up top and the URL. And next time I come to the report, we'll now see a new report. And then now that uh, seek medical help has gone away, I'm still seeing 16 because I'm counting by unique days right now and not by actual reports. So I, I've only done one report today and that's why we're seeing it this way. All right, cool. So in this, we did it. We did a, Hopefully, got got you from end to end. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. But also, please feel free to. I'd love to have you guys subscribe to our channel and hit the ring bell so you can find out other videos as we produce them as well. We do lots of training, and consulting around Power BI and Power Apps. You can find out more information at PragmaticWorks.com. Have a great day, and then thanks for watching this video today.